Hello, and uh, this is Milton. He is a nine-year-old Yorkshire Terrier, one of my very regular customers in the salon. He's come in for a pet trim today. He comes in about every six weeks or so. And what we've done is we've actually clipped his body on a 6F, uh, the wide blades. Uh, these are much, much easier, get a much, much neater finish with the wide blades. I've taken his body down, taken his skirt off because the owner likes them nice and tight underneath. And I'm actually taking the comb attachments down the legs just to make my life a little bit easier for trimming. So he's all been bathed and prepped really well. He's super, super clean and all nicely brushed out. I've used a nice soft slicker on his legs to kind of give him a bit of volume and to give him that nice sort of fluffy appearance so it's not clumpy or leaving lines when I'm clipping. This really does help with the leaving the nice neat finish on the legs. As you can see, I've clipped right the way down the back of the back leg as well, just taking the top of the leg down. And we're going to do the same on the front leg, giving it a really good brush up, making sure that the coat is completely tangle free. I'm going to give the leg a bit of a shake afterwards just to make the coat lay nice and naturally. There you go. And with the comb attachment again, just going to just going to whip off some of this coat here just to make life a little bit easier. Saves a little bit of a little bit of um, scissor work. So I'm just doing the tip tops of the legs. I haven't gone right the way down onto the foot. I just kind of blend it off about two thirds of the way down. And we can do the inside of the leg now as well. This can be done on a shorter comb attachment or even a, even a longer blade, perhaps a high IVF on the inside of the legs. That can kind of keep the inside of the legs nice and, nice and uh, not free for next time. Take it shorter so the owners haven't got quite so much to worry about. And just with my comb attachments, I've just quickly reversed it up the body, just to leave a slightly neater finish. Just take some of the ends and some of the fuzzies off the ends of the coat, just to, just to make it look a little bit neater. Especially on those bony areas, like around those shoulders, front of those shoulders, and up the back of the neck. Not quite so easy to blend in when you're reverse clipping. That's why I tend to do most of it with a blade. And then you can just quickly switch your blade around and just carry on going down the legs. We're going to have to um, blend those legs in, in a little bit, which you'll see how I do that in a minute. You can actually use a shorter comb attachment. I'm using the peach comb attachment. This is over a 40 blade on the Arco Clipper. I think it's a really nice length actually for a comb attachment. Really good length for a pet for a pet dog anyway. And the 40 blade gives it that much, much smoother finish. It tends to go through the coat a lot easier as well on a really short blade. So now I'm going to come down to our scissor work. I'm using a finer comb just to lift the coat. And now what I'm doing is I'm using a really, quite a fine pair of uh, blending shears, just to blend in that clipper area. Nice and short round his bottom. Kind of really showing off those rosettes now, those rosettes that are either side of the anal area. We're gonna trim those a little bit shorter. Gives it a nice look to the bottom when he's walking around with his tail up. I'm 
It might be easier to do this area with a slightly shorter pair of scissors. Actually, I'm going to actually use my arco there just to, just to trim that around that area. And I'm actually using the longest setting, which is a, the equivalent of a number nine. And I'm just holding it away from the skin very, very slightly. So it'll be very, very light in this area. If you take it too tight, then what happens is not only can you possibly catch him with that clipper blade, but also you can cause a bit of a rash. As you can see in the middle there, I've actually got a bit of a line, so I'm just going to blend that out with my blending shears. These are 50 tooth blending shears. The finer the blending shear, the neater finish you get. However, the more work you have to do, they don't take off, they don't work very well on very thick coats. You're better off with more of a, 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 um, a heavier, more of a texturizing blending shear. Again, some people may find this a little bit easier to do around the feet with a smaller pair of scissors. I actually also like a curved pair of scissors when I'm trimming around the bottoms of the feet. Just using my Arco on a um, on a 40 blade there just to nick out some of that hair, just to neaten up the foot. These are 8 inch straight scissors, that's my preferred scissor. I also tend to prefer, oh my hair's getting in the way there, I must get that cut. I also tend to prefer a convex blade rather than a bevel edge. I like the smoother feel of a convex blade. Although the only problem is with a convex blade, they do tend to blunt much, much quicker when using them on the heavier coats. But for this kind of soft, finer, yorky coat, it's great. Beverages are really, really good for gripping the hair as you trim, which means it's much better for a thicker coat. It tends to be a little bit harder getting a nice, neat finish, however, on a, on a, uh, with a beverage, because the beverages are serrated. You could use a pair of th thinning shears or blending shears on these legs rather than using your straight scissors if you're not quite so confident with your straight scissors. Texturizers or chunkers sometimes can be a little bit, a little bit um, heavy-handed for this kind of coat. However, something like a fishtail, so a, a much finer chunker, would work really well actually. I'm just trimming down the hocks now. Okay, can't really see what I'm doing here. This is the problem when I'm I'm not really got somebody to, to film for me. I'm sort of concentrating on filming myself. We can see lots of combing going on, and I'm actually using the finer, finer uh, end of this particular comb. This is actually a three-way comb. If you're, if you like, if you like using a larger comb, then the three-way comb can, can work really well. But definitely, the finer, the finer teeth you have on the comb, then the, uh, the, the much, much nicer finish you'll get because it's a lot more. Um, a lot more uh, thorough when you're combing out. Milton keeps backing off the table a little bit there. 
Normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't be handling my dog quite so much. I tend to work around my dog rather than make my dog work around me. But for the purposes of the video, then I'm having to move him into camera all the time. He's pretty used to it though. I've been doing it for nine years now, every six weeks. It's not so much me that's encouraged the owner to come every six weeks. They just like him looking really nice all the time. The trouble is with a six weeks dog is sometimes it's really hard to get a neat finish because the coat doesn't really have so much to grow, so much chance to grow. Then you're, you're constantly trimming shorter hair. You can get a much nicer, neater finish if you've got more hair to play with. Just trimming up underneath a little bit. Just stopping, just in short of, just in front of his penis, just so that I don't sort of catch his, his bits there. Sometimes I'll actually lift them up and reverse a blade up that area. So here we go again, lots of brushing, brushing up. Just to make sure I've got every single little hair away from the skin. And by brushing the hair down onto the foot, I'm now using my Arco just to whip in there and trim in around the pads. I'm actually scooping off some of the excess coat as well. Which makes life a little bit easier. Milton's not very keen on having his feet trimmed and he can be a bit of a pickle sometimes. So using the, the clipper blade means that I'm less, much less likely to catch him. And what I'm doing here with a curved pair of shears, uh, sorry, not a curved pair of shears, sorry, uh, a pair of thinning shears, is I'm actually putting almost like a D shape into the back of his leg. So I'm kind of coming in at the bottom of the foot, coming off the back of the leg and coming in again at the elbow. Now you can't see a thing. It's sometimes a lot harder to get a finish on the front legs as it is on the back legs. So this is where a thinning a thinning shear makes life just a little bit easier. Here I'm blending in the clipper line around the top of the leg. Now the kind of shampoo that I've used on Milton today was actually um, mink oil shampoo. That's one of my favourite shampoos in the salon gets them nice and clean. It's a quite a nice conditioning shampoo. And as you can see by his coat, it hasn't made his coat heavy at all. If you want to add a little bit of volume, I, I actually use a, a curly coat shampoo. The shampoos that I use are from Simpsons, their Show Pride range. But any kind of volumizing shampoo would be great to give a little bit of lift and a bit of bounce to the coat. I'm a big fan of the Hound shampoos, although sometimes they can be a little bit heavy for this kind of coat. Another really nice shampoo actually is a new one out called uh, from Groomers and it's the Julie Harris Signature range. And that's a, it's called the Strip Down Shampoo and it really does strip the coat right back. And yet it doesn't leave it harsh or, um, or static or dry. It's an amazing shampoo. It's kind of one of my favourites at the moment. It's very, very similar to Simpsons Show Pride Deep Clean. It's a real clarifying shampoo. But I love the smell. One of my favourite smells is the is the fresh cotton linen smell. It's just such a clean smell, and I just I think it makes the whole salon smell of clean washing, which I think is a nice smell. I'm not a big lover of these heavy. Um, baby powder type shampoos. So there we've done the front leg. We've got a nice tubular sort of front leg. We've trimmed up round the rosettes round the front. And now we're just going to crack on with his head. Just give him a bit of a bit of a brush through. Just to make sure that the coat is nicely, really well brushed out, really well combed through.
I'm probably dealing with a customer right there. I have a very open plan salon, and the customers, the the, um, the counter is literally about four foot from what, the left hand side. So it's kind of nice because often customers come in to have a chat, and they can really see what's going on. A lot of people find that really quite intimidating, but actually, I I kind of like it. It's I don't mind I don't mind customers watching me. It's nice to see what goes on, and also, I mean, just with the difficult dogs as well. Sometimes it's just nice for people to see what we actually have to go through. So here I'm using an Arco blade just to clip his clip his ears. Um, I've done the ears with a, a 15, so it's nice and tight. And what I'm actually doing here is I'm actually running the blade right off the end of those ears either side. So I'm not running it up the ear, but right from the right onto the edge of the ear. And actually this means that I pretty much don't have to do much trimming at all afterwards. Don't have to kind of pop around with the scissors. There you go. So you see, it's nice and safe. I can't catch the ear in any way. Because I'm constantly keeping that blade parallel to the edge of the ear. There's no way that that, that ear flap can, can slip into the, into the teeth there. Just, uh, now with my body blade, I'm actually going up and I'm just blending the top of that ear into the head. So again, with a 15 blade, just running that over the, the, the ear, from the middle of the ear out to the edges. I'm really keeping those teeth nice and tight into the edge of the ear, which keep just saves on that scissor work. It's so easy to catch the ear when you're using a pair of scissors. And this is this is just a brilliant safe way of doing it. If you find that the clip is not quite picking up the, the when you're doing the edge of the ear and the clip is not quite picking up the hair, then just slip especially if you're using like an arco, just just notch that, that blade down a couple and just take it a little bit tighter. So perhaps from a 15, sort of notch it up to a 30 blade and just do the edges of the ears. There we go. Oh, somebody's coming to the salon. Milton's got excited. No, it's not your dad, Milton. He's having a good old look to see who's come in. All right, come on, concentrate. So we're combing it all down. I'm just whipping through. Yeah, you know, if I come across a knot, I don't try and get it out with my comb. I use the comb to find the knots and use my brushes to get the knots out. I don't t don't don't drag out knots with my combs. It's, it's just uh, it's just uncomfortable for them. Oh, somebody else coming to the salon. That's the only problem with having a an open plan salon. So if you can see here, what I'm actually using is I'm using a pair of texturizers. Now these are like very sort of, um, sort of heavy duty blending or thinning scissors. The teeth are thicker and wider apart and often the teeth are quite heavily notched as well, normally with two or three notches in the top of them. They're really good for getting, getting rid of all that undercoat, uh, sorry, the... Um, um, getting rid of that uh, that heavy coat on something like a cocker or something, and they leave quite a nice natural finish. I'm just going over to set his set the shape in here with with the texturizers, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over it again 
with a pair of uh, 50 tooth blenders. These texturizers are 25 teeth. That's where they leave a coarser look. Leave lots of room for error as well. Always used to use straight scissors to put, put this kind of shape in, but now it's just much nicer to use a pair of thinners or texturizers. So I was just putting in a nice neat fringe. So I've gone over the top, nice straight line across the top, come down, angled it back a bit from the eye towards the ear. And just put it in the bottom of this this uh, face. And I've rounded that off quite a bit and made it quite tight into the back of his ears, mainly because he gets quite knotty. And also he's got drop ears as well, so when he puts his ears forward, you don't want too much coat under and behind the ears to come forwards. See, now I'm going over with my 50 tooth blenders, so these really, really nice, finer blenders, taking out the corners of the eyes with them. I'm just brushing that hair back. I'm just going to go up and round towards the ear again. Just to take it in a little bit tighter. Top of his head was already quite short, so I don't really need to take much off that. You can use the whole scissor over comb um, technique with the top of the head. If they're, if they're good enough, if they're well enough behaved. I mean, he's pretty good, to be honest. You can see he's, you know, he's a good lad. So again, just taking down the length with the texturizers. Taking it tight to the back of that ear, rounding it off underneath, coming in quite tight in front of that muzzle. Don't want loads of hair in front of that muzzle. Kind of keeps that cute, cutesy look to him. Just taking that, that corner of the eye out. There you go, coming up nicely forward. And with my 50 tooth blenders, my finer blenders, I'm just neatening up that line, making it look a little bit softer but a bit neater. And taking that nice that under that chin nice and tight. He's such a cute little chap, is Milton. Very obliging. Just combing that hair down over the nose. Sometimes there's lots of long sort of stray hairs. Over the nose, I just tend to just nick off over the top, just make that quite a little bit neater across the uh, the bridge of that nose. But it's not too bad on him. So I'm just going over and over the head. Now the head is the most important part of the dog. It's the bit that the owners see first. Oh, my hair in the way. It's the bit that everybody looks at. Is the head. Just, whoops, oh hello. Gosh, there's some grey hairs in there. I'm a bit of a fuss pop when I come over my head, so I tend to go over it and over it and over it. Just tidy up the inside of the ear yet again. There's a few stray hairs that I must have missed. But to be honest, that's kind of it, really. I should go over and finish off the other side after the video. But apart from that,
just going to trim up just the edge of the ears a little bit more. And I'll actually here what I'm doing is I'm rolling that hair back slightly and just trimming those eyelashes away, just either side. Then as that hair grows back, it actually grows upwards and outwards and it helps to push that fringe away. Finishing touches to the head. And we're pretty much finished. Hope you find it useful.